<clears throat> okay, everybody is coming into the meeting now. <clears throat> hey, welcome. Good evening. We will now call to order the regular board meeting of the Adelanto Elementary School District, Tuesday, September 8th, 2020. And um, may we have the roll call, please. Trustee Bentz? Here. Trustee Eckes? Present. Trustee Hines? Present. Trustee LaFrench? Present. And Trustee Turner? Trustee Turner, present. Thank you. A quorum has been established. The time is 5.31 p.m. And we will please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Ready, begin. I, I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag, to the flag of, the United States, of the United States of America, of America and to the republic, to the republic for, which stands, for which it stands, one nation, one nation under God, under God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty and justice, and for, justice all. for all. Thank you. <laughs> Item two, adoption of the agenda. Uh, 2.01 proposed additions, deletions, and adjustments in the order of business. Do we have any? Madam President, we do. Um, we are going to be pulling item 13.02, approval of schedule for regular board meetings. Okay. Thank you. Um, oh, sorry. One, one, one other. Uh, we're going to pull for discussion uh, item. Where's another? Another. I'm looking for unaudited actuals. It's on the consent. Yeah, 11.06. Yeah, we're just going to pull it just for discussion and, oh. and still, still vote on it after discussion. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So with those um, adjustments, we'll move to item 2.02, .02, adoption of the agenda. Do I have a motion? I motion that we adopt the agenda uh, minus the two items that were pulled um, for discussion and also pull from the agenda. Okay, and uh, do we have a second? At this, I second. Is there any further discussion? <clears throat> Hearing none, we'll call for the vote. Christy Benz? Aye. Christy Eckes? Aye. Christy Hines? Aye. Christy LaFrench? Christy LaFrench? LaFrench, aye. Christy Turner? Christy Turner, aye. A motion carries 5-0. <clears throat> Item three, closed session declarations. 3.01 declaration of closed session items. Uh, 3.02 closed session. Uh, <clears throat> discuss the RFP process for hiring legal counsel for the board, 3.03 .03, government code section 54957, public employee discipline, dismissal, release, appointment, reassignment, resignation. Um, item four, public testimony before closed session. Uh, do we have anyone, Chris? Yes, we have one individual, Jennifer Rader, and I cannot be here when you're ready. Okay, thank you. We're okay, ready. Jennifer, you're unmuted. We're ready when you want. All right, thank you. Let me find my document. I have to shrink my screen here. Hold on a second. I'm sorry. <laughs> the meeting it is huge. <laughs> um, great. I guess I could find it on my phone. Hold on. To, I'm sorry. Just one second, please. Okay. Good evening, Dr. Mitchell, Cabinet, Madam President, members of the board. Tonight, I would just like to comment on the state of our schools while the students are absent from the classrooms. I've spoken with many teachers and some say their custodial staff is completely ACEs, while others say they leave something to be desired, to say the least. However, some of our schools are, in a word, filthy. Cleanliness and sanitation needs to be the highest priority as we work toward returning to our schools with students in attendance. 
I know some teachers are Zooming from the classroom and of course admin and support staff are there. But I think this quieter time on campus would be a great time for our custodians and groundskeepers to do a really good cleaning of the schools. Power wash the buildings of the years accumulated dust and grime, repair holes and cracks in the playground, finally get that sour milk smell out of the cafeteria, and clean up the weeds and the cracks of the pavement. Instead, our sad, deserted buildings are looking even more run down and dilapidated as weeds grow and litter blows. Especially now that the campus is deserted, it's a great opportunity to really give the schools a brand new feel so that returning students get that shiny, take care of your school feeling. Let me just close by saying the cleanliness of our schools is a really serious problem, but now with COVID, it truly becomes a matter of life and death. Please use the leadership you've been given to see these issues through to a better result. Our students deserve a clean school and we deserve a clean place to work. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, is that it, Chris? Yes, that is the last one we have for today. Thank you. Uh, so our next item, item five, recess to close session, 5.01. Um, do we have a motion? A motion that we by motion. A Go motion ahead. We recess to close session to take up items 2.01. Now, where is it? Um, the stated agenda. I, I can't see it on my screen. Three, three point oh one to three point oh three. Okay, great. Echoes by second. Okay. We have a, a motion by Trustee Turner, second by Trustee Eckes. Is there any discussion? Okay, we'll call for the vote. Trustee Bentz. Uh, Bentz, aye. Trustee Eckes. Aye. Trustee Hines. Aye. Trustee LaFrench. LaFrench, aye. Trustee Turner. Trustee Turner, aye. Motion carries 5-0. Uh, we're now recessed to closed session. The time is, uh, can you give me the time? 5.38. Okay, 5.38 p.m. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Is everyone back? Yes, I believe we have everybody back now. Thank you. <clears throat> so item six, where we're going to call to order, reconvene open session or procedural business. Do we have the roll call, please? Trustee Benz. Uh, Benz here. Trustee Agas. Present. Trustee Hines. Present. Trustee LaFrench. LaFrench, present. Trustee Turner. Uh, Trustee Turner, present. Thank you. Quorum is established. The time is, could you give me the time, Z? 7.03. 7.03 p.m. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Item 7, our closed session report. We, the board took no reportable actions during closed session. And we'll move forward to item 8 public testimony. Do we have anyone, Chris? We have nobody for open session public comment. Okay, so we will move forward with uh, item nine, public hearings and sunshine proposals. Uh, let's see, there's none for this evening. Item 10, adoption of the minutes. Madam President, I believe 902, public hearing for the learning. 902, public hearing for the learning continuity and attendance plan. That uh, was, do we have a uh, presentation? Uh, no, no presentation, Madam President. Okay. Item 10, adoption of the minutes. No, Ten you need to President. open it. We need to open. Open. Oh, we need to open the session. Sorry, I'm just having the one that's going straight down. I don't have the, the okay. The President Hines, could you read what this is for uh, transparency in case no one else could see that? Okay, one moment. Let's see if I can get that for me. Only have the list. I'm sorry. Hold on. Get that. 
I'm, I'm, I'm happy to read it. Uh, Thank you. No problem. So Senate Bill 98 established a learning continuity and attendance plan, which is intended to balance the needs of all stakeholders, including educators, parents, students, and community members, while streamlining meaningful stakeholder engagement and condensing several pre-existing plans analysis. This is Adelanto Elementary School District's public hearing of the learning continuity and attendance plan. The learning continuity plan replaces the LCAP for the 2020-21 school year and supersedes the requirements in executive order of N56-20. This plan is intended to memorialize the planning process that is already underway for the 2021 school year. All LEAs, which include school district, county offices of education, and charter schools, are required to complete the, content, the learning continuity plan. Student achievement impact. The programs and supports that are outlined in the learning continuity attendance plan will describe the actions the LEA will take to offer classroom-based instruction whenever possible, particularly for students who have experienced significant learning loss due to school closures in the 1920 school year or, at the, or, or are at a greater risk of experiencing learning loss due to future school closures. Fiscal impact and funding source. The learning continuity and attendance, attendance uh, plan identifies expenditures associated with each action identified to increase or improve services to all students, including foster youth, English learners, or low income students. Recommendation of superintendent recommends the Board of Trustees hold a public hearing for the proposed learning continuity plan uh, for the 2021 fiscal year prior to adoption. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Mitchell. Thank you, Dr. Mitchell. So we will open at, could I have the time, Z? 7.06. 7.06 p.m. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Yes. This is Ms. Eckes. I did. I had um, a question and then a comment. Um, where, uh, this is being proposed, um, uh, the learning community and attendance plan for the 2021 fiscal year prior to adoption. But I noticed in it, there's a lot of uh, TBDs uh, that's to be determined when it comes to money. Um, that kind of concerns me. I know we're not there yet, um, but it is kind of worrisome for a trustee not to know what a lot of this is going to end up costing. So I'm assuming that will be brought back later when you do have the amounts of what things are going to cost and we will approve at that time. Is that my understanding? That's correct, Trustee Eckes. We will. We, the, the plan is is is, is, uh, is a working document, and so we are in the midst of having a, a stakeholder engagement meetings, getting feedback from uh, uh, our schools, our site leaders, our teachers, classified staff, and our parents and our students. Uh, when we approve or uh, adopt the uh, plan, we'll not only have uh, all the amounts completed, but we'll I will also provide an executive summary of the uh, the plan as well as when an executive summary of the line item costs. Uh, these dollars will be paid out of supplemental concentration uh, uh, LCAP grant funds, which um, I don't want to say doesn't impact the general fund, but but are designated for only for increased and improved services, uh, as well as to mitigate the learning loss of students due to COVID. Okay, so it's just considered a, a fluid document and will or plan Absolutely. and as we proceed then we'll know more about what we're spending and what we're doing and if anything's going to change and we'll just be updated at that time as we move forward am i correct that's correct ma'am thank you okay thank you no problem appreciate the question uh, dr mitchell i do have a question on the uh, learning uh, continuity and attendance plan um you're saying it will be funded out of the COVID funds am i correct on that some of it will, but most of uh, this, this identifies our supplemental and concentration portion of our okay. LCFS dollars. And so, yes, uh, a combination of both now. Okay. So we will use that money first before we go into any other funds. Am I correct? Absolutely. That? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. We have a huge bulk of money that should be spent by December 31. We are constantly, uh, we're, we're, we're currently uh, spending those dollars down. Uh, you, I, I've said this before, and it's, Will not be uh will not we, we will not be sending any of these dollars back. We'll make sure, make full use of the dollars that have been afforded to us in this time of crisis. And could you give us a could you give us an amount of those dollars again? What were what was a lot uh, allocated to uh, Avalanche School District? The amount of those funds. So, um, Miss Miss Turner, I'll have that in front of me. I'd be happy to get back get back to you on that. Okay, great. 
Okay, thank you. Thank you. Chris, do we have anyone who wishes to speak? We have two that requested to speak. I've checked the meeting twice now and I don't have them in there, but if we want to allow um, another individual, if they want to press the yes sign and I can unmute them. Yeah, let's do that, Chris. As of yet, we don't have anybody that's requested. Um, here's a public hearing. Well, I'm happy with waiting in another minute or so, uh, President Hines, if that's Thank okay. You. Yes, we will. Thank you. Uh, well, while we're waiting, uh, Dr. Mentor, do you know approximately when you'll start having the parent engagement? Do you know when we'll be having those meetings? We, we've we'll already we've already started them, and um, I think I've asked Miss um, uh, Pazinia to to tell the board when that's happening. Uh, Dr. Williams, could you could you brief us on uh, our any upcoming parent engagement meetings as it relates to LCAP? Sure, happy to. Good evening, board. Um, we had a parent meeting uh, on September 2nd. That was for the public. Uh, we also live streamed that on YouTube. On September the 3rd, uh, we met with all of AESD staff that wanted to give input. On this coming Friday, we're meeting with our DLAC parents mm -hmm. at 1 p.m. On September 17th, um, we're meeting with our special ed uh, parents and we will be walking them through the document and asking for their input. And we've had several parent advisory meetings prior to this, at least two other meetings okay. to uh, get their input. Okay. So Thank on you. that, we're also having another community advisory committee meeting on September 17th. That's what's in the document. Yes, so that is for our special ed, ed. That is for our special ed parents. Oh, the special ed parents. Okay. Thank you, uh, Ms. Turner. And so, uh, President Hines, free to continue at, at your uh, discretion. Okay. Uh, no one else has checked in, Chris. We have no requests at this moment. So, at this time, we will close the public hearing period and the time is president the time is 7 12 p.m thank you 7 12 p.m okay so moving forward item 10 adoption of the minutes 10 point um i would need a motion to approve the board minutes as written and order filled regular board meeting of august 25th 2020 Motion. Uh, I'm sorry. Echo my motion to approve. Okay. And is there a second? Uh, Trustee Turner, I second. Any discussion? Hearing none, we'll call for the vote. Trustee Benz. Benz, aye. Trustee Eckes. Aye. Trustee Hines. Aye. Trustee LaFrench. LaFrench, aye. Trustee Turner. Uh, Trustee Turner, aye. Okay, motion carries 5-0. Item 11, our consent agenda. Uh, item 1106 was pulled for discussion. Item 11.01 .01 through 11.10 minus item 1106. Could we get a motion to approve? I'd like to pull. Oh, okay. Is there, is there anyone else that wants to pull it? Which one would that be, Ms. Eckes? <laughs> yes, I'd like to pull 11.04 and 11.05. Thank you. Anyone else? So I would need a motion to approve. Minus 11.04, 11.05, and 11.06.
Do I have a motion? I motion, I motion to approve the rest of the consent agenda. Okay, is there a second? Trustee Turner, second. Any discussion? Uh, yes, I would like a 11.06. I know that. Uh, yeah, I. Oh, we. You know we that Dr. Mitchell mentioned that he was pulling this for a discussion. However, uh, this is a report. I want more than I want. You know, I want you to talk about this, not just. Yes. I want you to talk about this. Is the unaudited actuals, and this should be on a on a report. This should be in a separate agenda item by itself. So it never should have been on the consent agenda. So it's going to be more than just a, a board discussion. I want a, 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 a semi brief presentation on this. So, yes, we, we're, we're, we're ready. We're ready to do that, Ms. Turner. Okay, thank um, you. Thank you. But uh, we can right now. Uh, go, go through the other pulled items before we get into that. Yes, please. So we have the motion from Trustee Eckes and a second by Trustee Turner. There's uh, no discussion. We'll go ahead and call for the vote. Trustee Benz. Benz, aye. Trustee Eckes. Eckes, aye. Trustee Hines. Aye. Trustee LaFrench. LaFrench, aye. Trustee Turner. Trustee Turner, aye. Motion 50. Uh, we will move to item 11.04. Trustee Eckes. Yes, I pulled this item in also 11.05 because they're both um, the same subject. Uh, what I was concerned about was that this, this um, a consent agenda item has already been posted on EdJoin before board approval. And I was wondering, did something change? Did something happen? Because according to my knowledge, uh, the board never approves anything uh, or nothing's posted or done until the board gives its approval first. So I was just curious to know what, why that was posted before board approval. This is a consent item. So help me understand, uh, Ms. Eckes. So we're yeah, asking my, for approval. Yeah, to my knowledge, it's just common practice that a, a district, a board, a, a, a district, um, anybody, anything, nothing goes forward until the board has approved it. Um, yeah, that's where I'm confused. The board didn't know anything about this. We weren't apprised to it. Uh, we had no information on it, but yet it's on EdJoin um, and it's, it's gone forward. If the board decided not to approve this agenda item, it would have to be retracted. It would have to be pulled what, from EdJoin. What, why do you believe it's on EdJoin? This because is not I a thought. position. This is it, not a, on it. This, well, I'm, I'm trying to explain. Um, I had somebody look at EdJoin today and they described this exact position on, on the website and they called me and asked me they, if there was um, positions for um, uh, uh, people to work um, in our district uh, in, in this manner, um, not being paid, it was like a a volunteer type thing and it confused me. I thought, since when do we do volunteer employment or, or whatever on EdJoin? So that's what got my attention. Then when I looked so at Ms. our agenda, I'm sorry. Go ahead, I'm sorry, Ms. Sickers. Okay, so when I looked at our agenda, I put two and two together and I thought, okay, this is, I don't understand this. If there is something on EdJoin and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but if you go to EdJoin, you will see something about a position on there that says that we are looking for, um, uh, what's the right wording? We're, we're looking for volunteers who want to be counselors in our district uh, with no pay. And unless they, you know, read it to me wrong on EdJoin, that's what questioned me when I saw this on the agenda. And I thought, why is that on EdJoin? And why is it there before the board approved it? So if somebody can look on EdJoin maybe right now and investigate it, maybe during the board meeting, maybe we can get clarification on that in case I misunderstood. Dr. Williams, could you, could you um, talk to us about this uh, MOU we're asking for consent, please? Sure, Dr. Mitchell. Um, we currently have three other MOUs which has been approved by the board and that's what 
positions are currently posted on EdJoin. We're asking for tonight to approve um, these additional ones so that we can expand our offerings. Uh, the, uh, the particular ones that are on EdJoin uh, have been there for uh, approximately a year. So we're hoping that the board would approve these two additional MOUs to be able to expand our current offerings. Oh, okay. So this was something that was already in existence and that's why it's already on EdJoin and that we're adding two new, new um, I don't know, uh, colleges or groups that are going to now join this. Is that my understanding? Because I couldn't understand why it was on EdJoin. You're absolutely correct, Trustee Eckes. Okay, so it, it's already been approved. It was, I just misunderstood that it's already been there and we're re-advertising it because we're also now bringing up two new schools or colleges that are now, we're look, they wanna be in agreement with us and work with us, am I correct? That is correct. We currently have MOUs with USC, Cal State San Bernardino. Um, so those positions have been on the website for approximately one year. So the advertisement is continuing so that we may continue to expand our offerings to our students in the district through the use of interns. Okay, I understand now. Yeah, I didn't quite understand the connection. I guess I've never seen or heard of it on EdJoin. We just always did MOUs with colleges um, just, you know, directly. I, I just honestly don't ever remember seeing it on EdJoin. So that's where the confusion came in, but I understand now, so thank you. You're very welcome, Trustee Eckes. Okay, I have a question on that too. I have to agree with Trustee Eckes. I know that we've always had interns, but I don't ever remember seeing it on EdJoin. So uh, could someone this, explain that? This, well, Ed, go ahead. EdJoin, EdJoin allows us to advertise for those folks out there who are working on their credential who would like to have an intern position. This is one of the ways that we're able to reach those in the field who would like to participate in this type of program to get experience in, and complete their practicum hours as they are preparing to complete their credential. Now, I've always been under the impression that we went through universities to get the interns. So, um, so what you're saying basically is this is just open wide, open, opened up wide, not just the universities? Is that what you're saying? It's anyone that is attending that particular university so that they are aware. This is a way of creating a greater awareness. We know that everyone that's looking for a job in California, they're using the EdJoin as an opportunity to look for those uh, positions. So in order to get uh, more people interested in serving and working with our students, this is an avenue that we're taking to uh, draw more people to our district who are under the MOU with the uh, current universities we're working with. Oh, okay. That's what I want to hear. The current universities that were approved for us to work with. Okay. Correct. I understand now. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Williams. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, thank, you. thank you, Dr. Williams. Any further discussion? Okay, so we would need a motion to approve 11.04 and 11.05. Separately, Madam yeah. President. Pardon me? Separately, Madam President. Oh, okay. So 11.0. Yes. Okay, yes, Ethis, I motion to approve. Okay, is there a second? Trustee Turner, second. Any further discussion? Uh, you what? know, can I just make a quick comment? Um, again, like I said, I was notified by the public about this, this job situation and <laughs> they were a layman and they thought it was an opportunity for them to work in our district to get experience in counseling. So um, personally, to be honest with you, I did not look at it myself. I'm going off what I heard and maybe the district can look at it and make sure it's worded properly so that people don't get the wrong impression when they look at it, the way it's listed on EdJoin, because if they got that impression that it was for just laymen to come in and get free experience in counseling, you may want to kind of maybe make it more specific that it is for uh, people in school or who, you know, meet the requirements. Um, other than that, that, that's all I wanted to say on that. Thank you. It's good feedback, Ms. Eckes. We're happy to, do, we're happy to look into that. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, if there's further discussion, we'll call for the vote. Trustee Benz? Benz, aye. Trustee Eckes? Aye. Trustee Hines? Aye. Trustee LaFrench? Aye. Trustee Turner? Aye. Trustee Turner, aye. Motion carries 5-0. Uh, we'll need a motion for 11.05 to approve. Actions by motion to approve. Is there a second? Ben, I sec sec second. Is there any further discussion on this item? Hearing none, we'll call for the vote. Trustee Benz? Ben, I. Trustee Eckes? Eckes, I. Trustee Hines? Hines, I. Trustee LaFrench? LaFrench, I. Trustee Turner? Trustee Turner, I. Motion carries 5-0. Uh, we'll move on to item 11.06, business services, unaudited, unaudited actuals for the fiscal year. Thank you, and President, President okay. Hyde. And uh, thank, thank you, Ms. Turner, uh, for, for uh, bringing it up. You're absolutely correct. It should have been an action item. Uh, we're actually uh, happy to uh, provide some explanation um, around the unaudited actuals and we'll ask our, uh, our brand new uh, Assistant Superintendent of Business Service, Mr. Krause, if you could provide that overview, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. Yes, good evening and thank you, Dr. Mitchell. Good evening, members of the board, members of the community that are with us this evening. So as Dr. Mitchell stated, I wanna give a brief summary of the unaudited actuals. So what are the unaudited actuals? Well, this is a snapshot that tells us how we ended the fiscal year, in this case, the 1920 fiscal year. So in the agenda, you will see a summary report talks about the background. And this gives us an idea of how we, how many, uh, how much in revenue we received and how much in expenditures we spent in the 1920 year. And what that then does is give us a new ending fund balance, which carries over and becomes the new beginning balance uh, for the new fiscal year, which starts July 1st of every year. So as you can read in the report, it talks about a lot of things that have changed since March. You may recall in March, early March, the second interim report was presented to the board. And after, right after that, the COVID-19 pandemic hit. Uh, many of us weren't prepared for what would come next. It really affected the state revenues in the state. It affected the federal revenues. So when Governor Newsom came out with the May revise in May, it really looked devastating for many districts, including our district, as far as our revenues are concerned for this current fiscal year. But then there was some discussions amongst the uh, state legislature and they came up to an agreement with an adopted budget, which then restored the cut to the LCFF funding. So as we move forward into this new fiscal year, we are dealing with the uh, funding restored, but COLA was the one thing that we usually rely on for our uh, rise in expenditures that was not restored. So we're hoping that at some point that will come back to us. But as we move forward, part of the budget talked about what would the federal government would do as far as the HEROES Act, because that would potentially backfill uh, what the uh, funding was that the state is promising districts now. So we're keeping an eye on that. But as we ended the fiscal year, we received a lot more COVID-19 funding. And in this report, there is the uh, early on, the local control funding formula talks about uh, what our revenues are, as you can see on the pie chart there, that we receive a bulk of our revenues from the LCFF, from the state funding there. And then we receive other revenue from the federal government, some from the local and then other state as well, makes up our total revenues of 102 million uh, for the 1920 year as we ended the year. And then when we look at our expenditures, you can see there that we, uh, the bulk of every district's expenditures are in salary and benefits, including ours. And so you can see there the bulk of our expenditures of 103 million are in salaries and benefits. And then we have a other category such as books and supplies, about 2% our services and other operating at 11% uh, capital outlay and then other outgo. So as you can see, looking at the report, uh, there was some deficit spending uh, that you can see we took in a total combined revenue of 102, 603, 104, but then our expenditures when we closed the year we're at 103,373,796. So this gave us a deficit spending of approximately 2.2 million. 
looking back at the uh, second interim, when we projected how we would end the 1920 year, it was much higher deficit spending, about 6.1 million. So due to a lot of the savings when the schools shut down and the district shut down uh, during the COVID-19 back in March, uh, there were some realized savings that contributed to a lesser deficit spending in the 1920 fiscal year. So again, our deficit spending was about 2.2 million, uh, down from what it was projected at second in term, about 6.1 million. And as we move forward, we are going to be looking at our COVID-19 funds that uh, we were talking about earlier to see if we can offset some of the expenditures we've already had, and then also look at, as we move forward, moving some expenditures in there as Dr. Mitchell stated earlier, we have to spend that by December, the end of December of this year. So we were already looking at that and we'll continue to do so. And then we're also going to be looking uh, closely at our expenditures for the 2021 year and making sure that we're drilling down on how we're spending that and does it, uh, where, we are, where we are spending it in the budget. And so making sure that we're matching our expenditures with our revenues as we move forward. So we're optimistic that we will close that gap of the deficit spending as we move forward in the 2021 year and the out years. Um, then you can see there, it talks about in the report, uh, summarizes that first interim in December will be the next opportunity to give the board and the community a snapshot of how the budget is. And that covers the period of July 1st to October 31st in this fiscal year. So that will give the board and community an idea. How are we doing on our revenues? How are we doing on our expenditures? And uh, just to enable us to make adjustments if we need to as we move forward. Looking at the uh, summary of the report as well, you can drill down into the numbers that shows the unrestricted and the restricted in those columns and talks about how the uh, combined totals are as far as the revenues are and then the totals as far as the expenditures are in the main categories that we report on every year. And then at the very bottom, one thing I'd like to point out is the uh, unrestricted fund balance. So. As you see there, the uh, fund balance is, was in 1819 about 18.1 million. And then as we move forward, and that was about 17.8% of the reserve. And in 1920, we have about 15.9 million. And so that's about 15.4% of the reserve. So we do have a healthy reserve as we move forward and we want to continue that as well as look at our uh, revenues and expenditures and maximize that to the best of our ability in order to maintain that healthy reserve as we move forward. And so with that, I uh, am more than happy to uh, take any questions that the board may have. Thank you. Any questions? I would like to say welcome, um, Mr. Kraus. You did, Kraus, you did an, uh, an excellent job explaining this. Um, so now we know where we are and uh, thank you for the explanation, uh, especially on the deficit spending because that was one of my, that's always been one of my major concerns and I'm happy to show that uh, I'm not happy for COVID, but happy for the funding, the funds that we got because of it, that uh, you know, our expenditures are down there. Now, do you, do you anticipate that deficit spending will continue to decrease in the future? So we are working with all of our stakeholders on what that will look like, including the federal government and the state government. Again, it's dependent upon what the federal government will do as far as funding is concerned. Mm -hmm. We could potentially see a reduction in revenues if the federal government does not backfill uh, school districts in the state of California. But we're continuously monitoring what's going on at the federal level and mm -hmm. at the state level out of Governor Newsom's office. So uh, we are optimistic that we will continue to be able to reduce that. But uh, again, it fluctuates depending on what's going on with our funding uh, as we move forward. Okay, now how would that how would that affect our adopted budget that we adopted um, on June 30th for the upcoming school year? So that was a snapshot in time of the information we had at that point in time from out of Sacramento. And, mm -hmm. and we are still awaiting what's going to happen again with uh, the governor's office. He may change his predict, predict, uh, projections on revenues in the state, depending on the tax revenues that come in. And he may again come back to school districts and change their revenues. And that would also change our revenues that we are projecting now uh, with our adopted budget. So at some point, uh, we will definitely keep the board informed of, of when those changes occur and what we are hearing, um, but it will definitely potentially change our revenues uh, one way or the other as we move forward. Okay, one other question. Now, how will the HERO Act funding 
um, uh, affect our district. So with all districts, what had happened is that it's like an IOU from the federal government to the states to say if the state promises X amount of revenues to districts, then that's contingent upon the federal government backfilling or giving districts uh, several billion dollars in this case for the state of California to backfill that promised revenue. Because you may recall back in March, uh, the governor's office was about 56 billion in deficit from the tax revenues that they had anticipated. And so their entire state budget was flipped upside down. So basically he and the legislature are hoping that the federal government will come back and backfill a lot of that revenue that the state of California has lost due to uh, businesses not being able to generate tax revenue and employees not able to uh, have payroll taxes, things like that. So uh, we're optimistic that something's going to be reached in the near future. Okay, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Thank you. That's all I have. Great. Thank you. <clears throat> Any yes, other? Thank you. Yeah, that was a good report. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, so um, moving forward, we need a, a motion to approve. Okay. Trustee Turner, I motion that we approve the 2019-20 unactual, unaudited actuals. Is there a second? Second. Ed, I'm ahead. sorry, was Trustee Love French? Yes. Okay, thank you. Is there any further discussion? Okay, hearing none, we'll call for the vote. Trustee Benz? Benz, aye. Trustee Eckes? Aye. Trustee Hines? Aye. Trustee LaFrench? LaFrench, aye. Trustee Turner? Trustee Turner, aye. Thank you. Motion carries 5 0. It is approved. Uh, we'll move forward to item 12. Items removed from the consent agenda. There were none. Yeah. Item 13, new business 13.01 executive cabinet position and amend employment agreements. More use of that. I'm, I'm, sorry. I'm sorry, Ms. Hines. 13.01, new business. So, so, so board, this is a, a uh, proposal to uh, change the names of our, uh, of our chiefs back to assistant superintendent. There's two rationale for this. One, uh, the, the word chief is not recognized in the education code. And so I, I'm, uh, I'm asking that we revert their, their titles back to Assistant Superintendent Academic Services, Assistant Superintendent Human Resources, and Assistant Superintendent Business Services. The other rationale is that it's not consistent with my title. Uh, in this model with Chiefs, I would be the Chief Executive Officer. Uh, as, as you know, of course, my title here is Superintendent. So I'd like to realign their titles to, uh, to be consistent with my titles as well as my previous rationale for the, the um, chiefs not being recognized in the education code. The last and final one is that <clears throat> uh, oftentimes a chief does not uh, denote that they're the, uh, they're the top officer in that division. In many places, the chiefs report to an associate superintendent or a deputy superintendent. And so that, so that we want their title uh, to, to uh, denote that they are uh, the executive leader of that division. And I think that um, the assistant soup uh, communicates that a little bit more clear. So that's my rationale. Thank you. Thank you. And do we have a motion to approve? I have a question. Okay, so I will open it up for discussion once we have a motion. Okay. Okay, this is Mrs. Eckes. My question is, uh, the fiscal impact and funding source, uh, the fiscal impact to the general fund will be dependent on the action taken by the board. What exactly does that mean? The changing of these names, is it going to cost money or no. uh, increase um, uh, salary? Uh, what what no. is the reason for that? No, there's no other change to their contracts, but their titles. And so I apologize. I must have missed that. That, that language. And so uh, my apologies to communicate any confusion here. The only thing we're changing about their existing contract is their title. 
Okay. Um, having said that, I am a little concerned because we are approving the wording that we see in front of us. And again, it, it seems kind of odd to me that it's written that way. Um, how will the board know for sure that this doesn't increase um, a salary or add something, you know, um, money-wise to this new change? Because their contracts are exactly the same and, and I'm assuring you, the board, that uh, there are no salary increases here in the contracts and that this strictly is a, 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 a title change. And so we're not having any impact to the uh, to to our district fund, and so their contracts okay. they're, they're they're exactly the same, um, and we and I, I'm assuring you of that, uh, Ms. Eckes. Okay, um, honestly, I do think this is a great idea, and I agree with it. But that wording does concern me because uh, usually things aren't written like that, and it kind of makes me wonder now if there is some kind of financial gain or something, something to the change that would add more money or something to them. If I, uh, if I could recommend that the board, that the board uh, that is, amend, amend this uh, action to, uh, to just to say that uh, the board, the board uh, uh, approves the title change uh, as, uh, with the condition that there is no impact, uh, there is no financial increase to their contracts. So I will. Okay. Go ahead. I would get a motion to clear that up to um, include that change there because I am holding the amendment to contract uh, for the positions in, in question and it is only the one page that is changing the term and there's no financial, there's no um, salaries or anything listed on this page but i would need a, a um a motion so we can have further discussion if we need to is there a motion trustee right. Twitter, a motion that we approve the changes of the the chief business officer chief academic officer chief personnel officer back to assistant superintendent title on each position um, I also motion that there will be no financial impact in doing so. Thank you. Thank you. Did you get a second? I'm sorry. No, I'm, I'm waiting for a second. Okay, I will second that under those conditions, yes. Okay, and now we can go into further discussion if anyone has any further questions or discussion. Yeah, just to, I, I was here a look, look, looking, and if you say on, see, see on, on the pay page here, it says that all of other terms and con, conditions of the con, con, contract and any prior amendments shall re, re, remain un, unchanged and in full force and effect. So I did take take that as the pay and all the other stuff that, that's in the contract. Yeah. Correct. Thank you. Okay, if there's no further discussion, we'll call for the vote. Trustee Benz. Benz, aye. Trustee Eckes. Aye. Trustee Hines. Aye. Trustee LaFrench. LaFrench, aye. Trustee Turner. Trustee Turner, aye. Motion carries 5-0. Thank you. Item 13.02, approval of schedule for a regular board meeting. Um, that, item so pulled, pardon me? that item was pulled at the beginning. Oh. Of the meeting. Yeah. Yes, I do see that. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Turner. Okay, so we'll move on to item 14, <clears throat> superintendent's report. Dr. Mitchell? Yes. Thank you, thank you, board. Just a couple items to report. I want to congratulate. Um, oh, hold on, real quick. Just pull this information up. Yeah, so I want to congratulate Debbie Bowers, principal of our own West Creek Elementary. She was uh, granted forty-five hundred dollars uh, in a grant from. Uh, is any tell me who this was from again? Sure. 
excuse me, uh, for Ms. For Ms. Bowers. Give me one second. Let me go ahead and pull that up real quick. This is Office Max. Office Max. For 4,500, uh, and they can spend the money online. Excellent. And so, board, they they are, they want to take a picture with the with the principal and and board with a big check if possible. And so, we will be asking if they're going to reach out and schedule if you'd like to be a part of that picture opportunity uh, with with Office Max in our school uh, receiving those dollars, those funds. So, we want to congratulate uh, uh, Debbie and her team. So, thank you, Office Max. Yeah, congratulations. Good. Great, and so those are my comments for tonight. Thank you. Okay. Dr. Mitchell, could I, could I ask you to give us a brief uh, overview of how distant learning is going for the past week? Could you, are you ready, are you prepared to? Well, I, can, I can talk in general terms. Uh, what, what our principals are, are reporting is that uh, the technology issues are settling down, mm -hmm. that there's a, there's a clear routine in place across our schools and our families. Um, that I, I was at four schools today, and I, I see, um, I'm not seeing the offices full of parents. I've only, I'm only seeing onesies or twosies. I had an opportunity to be at a school today, and I'm so proud to see uh, that uh, we had a technology staff uh, working with a parent and a student, and they were working through a, a, uh, a Chromebook. I was at another school today, and just happened to see a parent come in and say, hey, I'm here to pick up some kindergarten uh, materials and some a work packet and the teachers were teachers were handing out some work packets and then I saw another parent today who came in and said I can't get she came right right in when I was in the office and she said hey I can't get this uh the the Chromebook to to get on my Wi-Fi and so we were able to fix that right away so I'm, what I'm proud to say to show uh to say is um the, the great customer level of customer service that I'm seeing across our schools I'm seeing a regular routine um, kick in with our families and schools. I'm all, I've also been at schools today when we were doing uh, the breakfast lunch pickup, and so our lines are full and packed. Our, our kids are being fed. Our, our, our classified staff are assisting. I'm coming in, and they're taking my temperature and asking me all the relevant questions. And so I'm happy to see that there is a sense of routine and normalcy um, back to our district, even uh, even in, in the midst of our crisis. And so um, I'm happy to give more detailed information in, in terms of attendance and, and uh, number of kids and the kinds of stuff we're seeing in the classrooms. Our, our, and also our, our administrators are, are in classrooms and observing great teaching that's happening across the board at our schools. And principals are reporting great work that they're seeing. Well, our principals are also suggesting that they've never seen this level of collaboration between our teachers uh, the, the, in prior. I think that because it's something new, that uh, teachers are just collaborating like never before. Just, hey, this is a great resource, this is a great program. Have you tried this? Have you tried that? And so uh, we're really um, take getting the most benefit, if, if that's possible to say, out of this crisis. And so I'm just happy to give that generalized report and can go into any level of detail that the board requires. And so I'll, I'll, I'll this week when I call you all, I'll just ask kind of what kinds of information would you like to see in our proposal or report that's more detailed. Well, Thank you. I, what I could tell you is right now during COVID and during distant learning, I would like to get feedback on what the parents are saying, what, what the teachers are saying, and uh, actually the principal, the professional development, how that's being, um, you know, spread out across our district um, and the feedback that you're getting from that. Um, we're not able to uh, go through walkthroughs, you know, yeah. like we used to, you know, as board members, you know, accustomed to doing. So we have to rely on you giving us that information back. Um, how, um, everything is, and you know, feedback on teachers and anything that they particularly need that uh, they're not getting. I know that you mentioned, um, well, well, we'll talk about that, but you know, some of the funds that will be going back to the school sites, the different school sites, we had a discussion on that. Are you prepared to talk about that? Yeah, so yes, uh, I, I gave you a report this week that described uh, the instructional initiative that we're undergoing right now, which all of our schools are preparing a professional learning and collaboration plan uh, in, in, in uh, coordination and collaboration with teachers. So the, the idea is this, is that each, each school 
along with your teachers should establish what the professional learning foci is, or that is, is what is it that teachers uh, from their own words and interests say is what, what they would like to learn to be able to do at a high level that they think would accelerate student performance and make the quality of distance education that much better. And so we've devised a, uh, a, pro, a, uh, a plan development process over this that we'll be uh, implementing this entire month where, t where principals will be working with their schools to determine um, the most impactful uh, needs-based uh, professional learning and collaboration opportunities that teachers are saying that they want to engage in, that they would, that they believe would improve their personal craft, their individual, um, their, their individual uh, performance, as well as their collective impact as a staff. And so, uh, we're happy to lead that. Uh, we've been rolling it out for the last six weeks. We've involved our ADTA leadership, and um, they've been involved from day one. They've been, they participated in our principal meetings, uh, which was, which was a new experience for both our principals and our ADTA leadership to be in the same meeting. I've also had private meetings with, uh, with both of our leaders from our unions, as well as the executive board and our site reps uh, to be involved in this process. And of course, there are still questions and concerns and considerations that we're continuing to have in conversations that we're continuing to have. We will continue to work these kinks out, but, the, but, the, uh, but one of the things that I can report that teachers have said, I've, I've taken surveys from all of our meetings and have um, very clear indicators of the overall uh, acceptance and of, of this plan of action and its direction in which we, that the teachers are part of the decision-making process as it relates to the professional learning opportunities and collaboration opportunities that they'd like to see on campuses. Our principals have widely embraced this in our learning the process just as teachers are learning um, distance learning. And so the whole idea is to define for ourselves what constitutes high quality distance learning, what kind of learning needs do teachers have to, um, to really implement a high, qual a high quality program, um, and how can the district office support those efforts as well as support the efforts of our principals? And in doing so, I've um, increased, uh, I've asked staff to increase the, uh, the site allocation for supplemental and concentration funds from 270,000 to 750,000 in total for all of our schools. Uh, prior to this increase, schools were given a flat rate of 20,000 for most of our schools, as well as 10,000 for some of our smaller schools uh, to, to use for discretionary funds. I've uh, asked staff to calculate a per people allocation of close to $83 per student, which, which uh, in many cases doubled the, uh, the dollars available for schools to spend on uh, technology resources, uh, peripheral equipment, um, intervention and acceleration for student supports, as well as uh, extra duty hours for teachers to um, collaborate with one another more, more often in after school weekends if needed, uh, as well as pay for uh, the professional development that comes about as a result of this plan. And so I don't, I don't believe giving, in giving unfunded mandates. And so we wanted to make sure that uh, we, we, as often the state does is give us unfunded mandates, but I wanted to make sure that we were pushing uh, the dollars to the discretion of our principals along with the expectations of them leading and developing high quality professional learning plans alongside and with, uh, in collaboration with their teachers. And so I'm gonna be able to give you more data on that um, as we're going and, and we're just excited about the process. Our leaders have uh, communicated their excitement about the process. That's why I've been out at schools, just checking and keeping my ear to the ground to make sure that I'm, uh, we're, we're paying attention to um, the feedback in the system feedback is so terribly uh, important in these days and times. It's really hard to know the impact of, of, of the decisions that we're making in the district office without asking our teachers uh, how they're feeling, without asking our principals how they're doing and how they're managing. And so I spend a lot of time, a lot of schools, we try to do four to six schools a week. And I always, uh, and, and, you know, and, and uh, tell them I'm coming and just sit down with our principals for a few minutes just to get a good sense about how our team is doing, what more can we do to support their efforts? Uh, what clarity do they need? What barriers can I remove from their, from their way? And how can we help them to help uh, teachers be more successful and effective 
with reaching all of our students and engaging all of our students, we believe that given the right environment, that our teachers can, uh, given the ability to provide high quality education, that our students can exceed um, their, their current levels of performance and meet uh, their, their, their uh, potential as young human beings. And so we're just excited about what the future holds uh, with this new pathway. And, and so thanks, I wanna thank the board for your support of, of this cabinet's leadership in that effort and we'll keep you posted as we're going. One other thing, um, and then I'm done. Uh, I apologize. Um, I understand that we're opening, uh, we're enrolling for the after school program. Uh, could you give us some information on that? Yes, I've, I've, um, I'm, I'm concerned as you are board about our declining in, in enrollment. Um, and so we've, I've asked uh, Dr. Dr. Williams to re-engage and double up our efforts, both not only for our, um, for our uh, after school programs, but also enrollment in our independent study programs. We, we want to try to find the right model that fits each of our families. We, we know that this COVID has, has provided huge challenge to our working families. We want to be uh, viewed as a partner with our families and, and find ways to be creative um, uh, around how we can help families provide solutions for both uh, before after school care, uh, nutrition as well. Uh, and then also for, for parents who are just working uh, during the day, during our distance learning hours and, and, and offering increased opportunities for our, for our kids, for our parents to utilize our independent study services. We believe we can compete very well with our competitors out there. Uh, we, we see them as partners, but we're, we, we, we can play in that area as well. And so uh, we're, we're, we're tasking our, our new public information officer to help us. And he, he's promised he's going to uh, double our student enrollment in one year. And so we're, we're, <laughs> we, we, we got great hopes for, for Mr. Quintero. And so, uh, and, and, and uh, he's working hard on that. He started today. And, um, and uh, he's still at work now trying to figure that out. <laughs> I'm just kidding, Lord, but we're, we're, we're happy to have him on board. We think he's going to add a lot of value to that effort. And we're, and we're thankful for uh, Dr. Williams and her staff uh, for being creative and trying to um, and boost our enrollment. But more importantly, it's not just an enrollment in dollars, although that's, that's hugely important for us. But what's more important is being responsive to the needs of our families. Yes. Thank you, Dr. Mitchell. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, board. We'll keep you posted. Thank you. <clears throat> Item 15, recess to closed session if necessary. You will not be recessing. I'll move to item 16, governing board members' reports and announcements. Trustee Benz. Um, wow. I've been on a chair all day in Zoom. So, and then here I am in Zoom again. <laughs> I should be more prepared. Um, I just wanna, you know, la last time I talked here, I thanked the te teachers and then afterwards I thought, oh, I didn't thank the classified and how rude of me because, you know, they're go going where they're need, need, needed. And I uh, appreciate that flex flexibility that they're going in the dis district where their need needed and I appreciate that dead dedication to the dis district so if I didn't say thank thank you la last time I meant meant it and so I'm going to take this time to thank you for all you you've done as well as the te teachers and um, you know we'll get through this and I can't wait till we all can get back into the class when it's safe because I know our kids need need it and that's all I'm going to say because I really am like phew, tired so ev everyone please have have a good 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 night thank you trustee love French I just want to thank everyone. I know that um, I spoke about, you know, the school year getting off or getting off to a great start. Um, I want to thank um, everyone for all that they have been doing. Um, I look at it that we are being successful. Um, I'm proud to be a part of this district. I know that um, 
distance learning and COVID, all of that came out of nowhere. But I'm proud to say that, you know, today, you know, seeing the food being given away, seeing the teachers, seeing the classified, seeing everyone, I would really want to know a little bit about the cleaning of our schools, but I'll leave that for another time. Um, but I just want to say that I am proud of everything that everyone's doing. I was on a, um, a back to school. It was very thorough. It was very kind to hear, you know, um, teachers saying that, you know, they go and stay as long as they're needed to stay. You know, um, if it takes till two, three o'clock, they're still there for, you know, the children to help tutor them. It's very kind as a parent, you know, to know that, you know, that we have um, teachers in our district that it just doesn't stop at 1230, their willingness to, you know, continue to um, sit with the children and to help them over beyond those um, 1230, one o'clock hours. I, I just appreciate where we're going um, this year. That's it. Thank you. Trustee Eckes? Yes, um, uh, again, uh, I always repeat this at every board meeting because it is a huge concern of mine. Not only can I relate to it, um, but the more I, I hear about it, the more disturbing it is to me. Um, I'm hearing very positive things about teachers using Zoom and the distance learning, but I'm also hearing some negative things and very sad things and experiences teachers are having. Um, it's, it's, it's very disturbing to me. Um, I don't know what the solution is other to eventually start opening our schools. Um, I understand we have COVID. I understand we have lots of challenges, but there are children that really need to be, uh, well, parents, well, you have parents that need to go back to work. You also have children that need to be in a very, very safe school learning environment. Um, this is very crucial to some of the children in our district. Um, it, it's, it's heartbreaking. Um, without getting into detail, I just really want us to start looking at that model and start uh, going in that direction for those students that really need to be in a very safe and uh, loving environment. And I do believe that our schools do that for our children. I've experienced it. Um, I've witnessed it. I was involved in it when I used to work in the school kitchen many years ago. We have children where this is their home. This is their life. This is where they feel comfortable. And um, it just, it, it's just going to have to happen eventually where we are here to nurture those children and keep them safe and um, just help them to just learn and grow. And we all know children can't learn and grow if their uh, environment or their learning is just not working for them where they're at or in their situation. So again, I, I just want to keep reiterating that eventually I do want to see our school start opening, maybe at a small capacity, maybe for people who only feel comfortable and keep doing distance learning for the others. But there's just some children that it's just not working for them and it will not work for them. And we need to really address those children so that we can educate and keep safe, you know, the whole child and all of them. So that's just a real burden on me as a board member to hear and see the things that, that I'm experiencing. And, and it's just, it, it's really sad and overwhelming for me. So again, I just want to throw that out there. You know, it is what it is, but I just want people to be aware of that it's really not all working for everybody. There are some people that are being left behind and it's just, it's just not working. So um, just a comment I wanted to throw out there and, you know, share my burden with you because it is really rough out there. Um, but other than that, I do want to thank everybody for doing what they're doing. Like I said, I have heard some very positive stories and experiences, and it's exciting to hear that. So I'm glad it's working for some people and they're enjoying it and the kids are really excited about it. Um, I've heard several teachers have 100% attendance. The children can't wait to start school every morning. They're excited, they're happy. Uh, their parents are getting involved with them and they're learning. It's beautiful to hear those success stories. So, um, you know, it's, it, it's, I don't know, it is what it is. And like I said, I'm trying to stay positive, but when I do hear some negative, it really uh, affects me. 
So um, just wanted to share that. So thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you, Trustee Turner. Okay, um, I would just like to, you know, piggyback on a lot of the things that the other trustees have mentioned about, you know, working together. Um, I know we're in uh, unprecedented times and, you know, we're learning together how to do this. You know, at the end of the day, it's about keeping everyone safe and our children educated. I know that distant learning doesn't work for everyone, but, and I know that there's a lot of challenges out there that parents are facing, teachers are facing. But, you know, I have to give you kudos. You're doing an outstanding job. Um, one thing that I can say is that we are keeping, my, keeping our children alive and safe by not bringing them back to school in an environment. Um, I was at, I was at, um, I drove around today looking at passing through a lot of our schools and, you know, the lines of parents getting the lunches, I mean, the dinner, the breakfast, the lunch, and the dinner. I was really, really amazed at what I saw and, and the job that our, our CNS staff was doing. They were very professional. They had, you know, their list set up and they know exactly who they were giving the, the food to. It was amazing. And when I say good food. I saw some great things being put in the back of cars. I saw fresh fruit. I saw fresh uh, vegetables. I saw bags and bags of food. So I just want to give a shout out to our CNS department, you know, our, our teachers. I mean, every day you come to school not knowing what you're going to face. And we've never had to do this before. So we're learning on the job. And you know, we're learning on our feet. And I know after this is over, we're gonna be able to do anything. We're gonna be able to teach in any, any situation. And, you know, you guys, I can't, I can't give you more kudos than that. You know, I really appreciate what you do because, you know, as a grandparent, my kids are grown, but as a grandparent, my granddaughter is here every day. She stays with me and I peek in on her and wow, she's working and I see the teachers talking and I see the class engaging and it's just absolutely amazing. So, you know, kudos to you, kudos to the district office staff. I mean, putting it all together, um, you know, and, and just, we're gonna get through this. I mean, it's a, it's a trying time for all of us, you know, to learn and, and stick together and share ideas and share solutions and, you know, share sad stories and can't give hugs, but we can give virtual hugs and, you know, just reassure everyone, you know, to Michael and to Stefan, welcome aboard. I know today is your first day. Michael, you did a phenomenal job explaining, you know, our unaudited actuals, our, our unaudited actuals, actually, yes. So I uh, give kudos to you, Dr. Williams, Dr. Mitchell, um, Andrea Cordell, um, all of my fellow board members, Xenia, you're amazing. You know, you're always there for us. But Dr. Mitchell, you gave, um, and you didn't have it ready, but your, your superintendent report was absolutely amazing. You know, and I know you didn't have that written, but you have it in your head. So uh, I give you credit for that, and it was great. So together we could do this, and we can be that premier district in the high desert, in, in San Bernardino County. I, I know we can, and I know we will, because we are capable of it. And our kids are capable of great things, because we have great teachers in front of them, and we're gonna make them even better. You know, so, um, you know, let's continue to work, help each other, motivate each other. And uh, parents, if you are struggling in any way, if I have parents out there listening, if you are struggling, in any way with your children, please don't hesitate to contact the district. Contact the district. We will be there to help you in any way that we can and refer you to the needed support that you need. You're not in this alone. You're not in this alone. We're here for you. So with that being said, that's all I have. And thank you, everyone. I appreciate you. Thank you. And um, I just concur with so much that has been shared already by my fellow trustees. 
I want to say thank you to everyone. Welcome new team members, new family members. And um, we'll just keep moving forward together. And so at this point, item 17 on our agenda, adjournment. Do I have a motion? At this by a motion. We have a second. Last French, I second. Any further discussion? We'll call for the vote. Ben. Uh, Benz, aye. Christy Eckes. Aye. Christy Hines. Aye. Christy LaFrench. LaFrench, aye. Christy Turner. Christy Turner, aye. Thank you. Motion passed. Zero. <laughs> good night, everyone. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. 10 p.m. Good night. Good night. I'm sorry, what was the time? 8 10 p.m. Thank you. You're welcome. Good night, everyone. Bye-bye, everyone.